Okay, so I wanted to give a little intro about the recording that we're about to clip over to here in just a second. And this recording is about KPIs. It's about key profit indicators. I gave it to uh, a live event in Bangkok. I was invited to go out there and speak. I had nothing to sell from stage, nothing like that. It was just an opportunity to speak and share some of the knowledge that I've gained over the years. Now with my KPIs, I've been able to double my business every year for the past four years, double the profit that is, the net profit, that's really important. And I've been able to work less in my business and more on it. Um, these are proven factors on here. I've been coached by, by some of the best people. I do mention that in here. So if you're interested in getting coaching on KPIs, there's no affiliate links or anything like that. I just share the resources that I use to learn how to do this. Nothing I share in this is gonna be original, uh, it's just that I implemented it, and you can see how I did it here and how it affects my business. It's a fairly short um, <clears throat> presentation, the way it's designed, it's, it was 30 minutes presentation, and then 30 minutes questions and answers. The questions and answers are just as good as the presentation, if not better, so you get a chance to see what some of the, uh, the audience asks on that end of it. So, if this interests you at all, you probably wanna watch this, you're gonna gain a lot of value of it. Every person here paid $750 to watch this so you get it for free how about that um, and these KPIs can be applied to any type of business out there it doesn't matter if you have an e-commerce uh, whether you have a brick and mortar online offline business you need to measure what you're doing now my KPIs what's really nice about them is that unlike other businesses mine are extremely simple and I would uh, encourage you to keep it the same way because uh, I think you'll find that out so I hope you find this of value and uh, we'll see you over there. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. Find your seats. And we'll get started here. Okay. <clears throat> All right guys, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down. That's it. Okay. Um, so this presentation, I gave the same presentation in Singapore. We had a private event there and uh, Dan came up and told me it was his favorite presentation in Singapore. So hopefully you guys will find it's one of your favorite presentations as well on here. So I'll get started here. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share with you how I manage 34 employees using KPIs, but more importantly is that by using KPIs, I get to work a lot less on my business and every year since I started this process five years ago, we've doubled our profits and in the first two years we didn't have to hire anybody extra, we didn't have to pay any extra in traffic or advertising or, or, or anything else and we're up at this point at six million dollars this year. So this has the effect that if you run these KPIs through your business, um, you can almost double your business and your, your profit on here. So and these are, what you're gonna find is that it's wildly simple to do. Um, and yes? What is your business? Okay, I'll, 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 I'll get into that, I'll get into that, no problem. Yep, what's that? Yeah, I do, yeah. And how's that, better? Yes, okay, cool. All righty, so. All right, so just a little bit of backdrop. I'm gonna do a little backdrop of myself and then we'll get into the KPIs on here. Right here, this, uh, in 2008, that was my home right there. I lived in the back seat of a 1982 Mercedes Benz. Um, I converted it from diesel over to vegetable oil and I had an arrangement with a local taco restaurant that I would pick up their dirty vegetable oil. Normally they'd have to pay to have someone haul it away. So it was a win-win. So that's where I lived right there. Um, that was me back then. Um, I had a, I had an eating problem, a drinking problem, uh, an unemployment problem, a housing problem. So uh, life was pretty bad at that point. And uh, I came across a contest by Bill Phillips. How many people know Bill, heard of Bill Phillips? Body for Life and stuff like that. So he started uh, Transformation. And it was basically the same thing, uh, but it was a little bit longer. It was 16 weeks instead of 12. And it was more about working kind of from the inside out. Um, and first prize was $50,000. And I had no money and I was broke. So I thought, man, this would be great. I could get fit and get $50,000. Well, um, I ended up actually winning it. That's my picture up there. That's my before and after. And once I got onto Bill Phillips' uh, transformation and his whole company there, um, I ended up speaking and being the spoke per spokesperson for his company. And so I, I spoke all over the United States talking about my transformation and his company. And I shared the stage with a lot of celebrities like Paul Abdul, um, John Asraf here, and I started hanging around a lot of people who made a tremendous amount of money, uh, somewhere you know, 50, 100, sometimes a quarter million dollars per month 
Um, so that was the environment I was hanging around with. I just made some dramatic transformations uh, internally and physically. Um, and I thought, now I need to apply this to my business. And so my first year in business, um, I made $1.6 million. Uh, and I'll get into a little bit about wh what I do with my business there. But I wasn't focused on the 1.6. That's my personal income tax. What I was focused on instead was the taxes that I had paid. Okay, I had paid uh, personal taxes. I paid over half a million dollars. That doesn't include corporate taxes on top of that. So from that point on, I was looking at how can I eliminate my taxes down to zero legally. Now, this is not a tax thing on here, but it's important because I had a brick and mortar business in the United States. And now in order to go tax free, which now I have a second citizenship and all that kind of other stuff, um, I had to go virtual and I had to move out of the United States. And that brought me to KPIs, which totally changed my business. Okay, so that's the, that, that's the backdrop behind that. Um, I got, a, uh, it was, I got um, quite a bit of uh, media attention, uh, both for the transformation and for the business uh, doing well. Uh, how many people know Dan Kennedy? Raise a hand, anybody? Okay, Dan Kennedy. I didn't know Dan Kennedy. So Dan Kennedy's office called me up and said, hey, Dan Kennedy would like to interview you for a project that he's doing that's called uh, recession made millionaires, people who made a million dollars in their first year in business during the 2008, 2009 recession. Um, and I said, I'm not interested. Hung up the phone, got a call the next day. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know who the hell it was. <laughs> so I got a call the next day and, and uh, this time it was a different person uh, and said, uh, hey, do you even know who Dan Kennedy is? And I said, I have no idea who he is. Well, you may want to Google him online. So I did. Um, and part of the deal was is, is uh, he, he flew me down and a couple of other people and uh, in exchange for doing this, he'd fly us down and spend one full day in a room about this size, and there was five of us, and we would just pick, it, pick apart each other's businesses. And, and that was one of the greatest experiences I ever had. So anyways, um, so let's, my, my business, when, when it first started out, my business was catering to offline businesses, basically. You know, you've, you've heard the story before, uh, offering services for SEO, for Google Places, uh, AdWords and stuff like that, basically doing everything for uh, and being everything for a, a local business. And that drove myself and my employees crazy doing all that kind of stuff. So we, uh, long story short, we, we narrowed it down to deliver only what the customer wants, which they just want a live phone call. They just want customers calling them. Um, and so my business uh, evolved into pay per call. So all we do is we automate this, uh, the entire process and we're just delivering live phone calls. They just pay for calls. It's kind of like Google pay per click. This is pay per call. That's our business. It's a very simple uh, business model. It's a very simple sales process. We're not promising you know, that you're going to get on page one, none of that stuff. We're promising you live phone calls from your area. They're all recorded, all that kind of stuff. But so that's what I do. And um, I want to give credit where credit is due here. Um, I was in a mastermind with, with this guy up here. You guys all know him, right? Okay. And I said, you know, your KPIs are crazy. Where did you learn how to do this? And he said, I got coaching from Scott Hallman. So if you want to learn how to do this, that's the guy right there that you want to do that. So none of the stuff that I'm going to present here is going to be uh, original. It's all stuff I've been coached on. I just simply implemented it. So a lot of times as uh, entrepreneurs, we want to be able to grow, even maybe even double our business. And a lot of times when you think about doubling your business, doubling your profits, Oftentimes, you think like I used to think is that I I'm going to need to maybe double my staff or I'm going to maybe need to double my uh, AdWords budget, stuff like this. Actually, you don't. Um, what, what, I, what I was taught on here is that if you just take two to four key levers in your business and particularly focusing on traffic and conversion, right? Because we're all digital nomads or digital no, no women are here. What do you call it? Digital people. Um, and we all depend on traffic and conversion, right? No matter what your business is, you have to have traffic and conversion. If you don't have those two things, then you just have a really expensive hobby, I guess. Um, and so all I, all I did when I was first coached is just said, look, let's just take a conversion rate. Now, wherever your customers go to or your potential customers, let's just convert them over, not by 20% or 50% or something crazy, just three to 5%. Look at your traffic, just kind of try to try to cut that down or, or, or increase that by 5%. What happens is you have this incredible compounding effect. Just by these little teeny four levers here, you can actually increase your total revenue easily by 30% on here. And the really cool thing about that is that 
when you're growing your company at a rate of 30% or more per year, you're considered a, a gazelle, is kind of what they call it in the MBA world, a, a gazelle company, meaning you're fast, you're growing very fast. And so what's, what's really cool is that for like an average company, if you're grossing a million dollars per year and, and you're profiting $200,000, just by increasing your revenue by 30% through no additional employees, costs, or anything like that, just adjusting these little uh, KPIs just by three to 5%, you can actually double your profit. We more than doubled our profit our first year. We've done that every single year since then, um, and we're, we're doing very, very well. Um, oops, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go, go and give some real live examples of the KPIs that we actually use in, in my business here. Um, let me give you some, some overview of some of the more these may seem complex to some people, and some people they, they may not. But um, we used to have just a common uh, long sales letter. It's a B2B sales letter um, and selling our, our products and services. And when we just switched that from our long sales letter, basically taking the same content in there and just adding a video of it, we increased our conversion rate not by 3 or 5%, but by over 58%. On that. that right there more than doubled our business. We had no additional employees, nothing else. Then we split tested it again and we did the sales video and then we added the long sales copy below it. That increased by over 103 or 4%. Just that alone, period. Um, I'll share some others that we did here. Here's some, this is, some, this is what we started out with though. You always start with something very basic. So this is one of the KPIs here, is we took our, our buy button. I always thought, you know, green is go, right? Green means go. It actually turns out that within our niche, and you have to test this out with your own niches on here, is that uh, we get a 23% higher conversion rate when we use orange as the buy button. Everything else is exactly the same. See, it's very easy to hit that th 3 to 5% increase in your conversion rates when you're doing just tiny stuff like this. And, and this is not unusual. My numbers are not unusual on here. Then the next step is, is, is we took the, the wording in here. You usually have like buy now or something like that. We, we, we split test that now that we know the numbers. So this is one on here where we had a 48% increase in conversion rates. Again, no additional cost, nothing like that. And we have the colors that we've tested, right? So we have the colors, but now the wording's different. One is see product video, and the other is watch demo. Which one do you think got the 48% conversion rate? Watch demo. Yeah, watch demo, yeah, exactly, yeah. Watch the demo. I don't know, that wasn't obvious to me at all, my team. <laughs> we had this one over here, see, you, know, you wanna go see the product. Video, no, watch the demo. It's much more friendlier. Yeah, no, this, isn't, I'm, this is not an anomaly, okay? I'm not off this idea. Everyone can get this. That's what's so exciting about this. Every single person here has the ability uh, to literally double their business with no additional cost. Problem is, is most people don't take action. I gave this presentation to a group of everyone who's making at least a million dollars per year. Um, that was about six months ago. I run into them, say, hey, did you implement any of this? No, <laughs> don't be one of those people. <laughs> Okay, so what's hard about it is that uh, a lot of times entrepreneurs have, a, they, they don't know what to test, what to measure, uh, lack of any kind of testing whatsoever. Uh, does anybody now do any kind of KPI testing, split testing of any of their landing pages, their sites? Good, uh, excellent, nice. Um, and then lack of documentation and standardization. We use all of our processes uh, throughout my entire company, we use a membership site. We, some people use Wiki. Uh, we just use Optimized Press too. It's just a typical kind of membership site. And uh, that's our internal document. And everybody who's in charge of whatever department or whatever job is, they, they, they're documenting through video and written text exactly their processes, what they're doing. If they just finished a test, they document it. That way, if we lose somebody, if we lose an employee, we already have the training in there. Okay, we just need to hire somebody, they come in, they watch the videos and all that, and they, get a, and they get the majority of their training there. Plus, we don't have to go back and kind of reinvent the wheel. We have it all our living documents in there. Okay, so here's our first KPI. So what, what we've done here is we've basically um, gamified this. Um, you know, like if you play like um, Angry Birds, right? You get a top score, right? But, but in order to get that top score, and this is my top score, so, so this is my smart KPI up here. It's, it's just my ROI for AdWords. Very simple, right? It's not complex. Um, but, 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 but what makes up this ROI, these are some of the things that can, can affect it here. So just like when you're playing Angry Birds, you're trying to knock over a pig, that might be like a quality score, okay? Or you're trying to knock down a structure, that might be your click-through rate. All that adds up, 
and will affect your final top score on here. So the only thing that, that I'm looking at as the owner of the company is, is my ROI. And as long as the numbers, and my numbers are, are, are color coded. So as long as they're blue, they're fine. I can be horseback riding and if I have internet connection, I, I, I can look on my phone and I can be jumping up and down. And I can't actually see the number, but I just know it's blue, I'm fine. I just put it back in my pocket and I'm done. I don't have to worry about it. If we hit yellow, that means within 12 to 24 hours, all of the heads of, of each department need to sit down and we need to figure out where's the hole down here. Where's the hole down here that brought this ROI down to a yellow? If it's a red, if my numbers right now for AdWords, because we spend anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 per day on AdWords, if my AdWords was red right now, I wouldn't be here. The room would just be you guys. That's it. Because that's, that's a red alert, so whatever's, whatever's happening there. Fortunately, that, that hardly ever happens. It's, it's usually very gradual. So this is my smart KPI right up here. That's the only one I look at. The only time I look down here at my micro uh, KPIs, like the quality score, the click-through rate, the cost per click, um, is if this is getting in, in, into the yellow zone uh, on here. So very, very basic. You could, you could measure tons of stuff with, with uh, all the tools that are out there with AdWords. We don't. We just measure it here. We just measure the very basics. Uh, email KPIs. I've talked to quite a few people here since I've uh, been here, and um, I'm always surprised by how many people don't collect emails. They're like, well, I'm in the software business, or we build websites, and we don't really have a need for collecting email assets. No, I'd say every single business, if, you've, if you're dealing with customers and potential customers, you have to have a, a build your email list. And our, uh, I'm just looking at my value per subscriber on here. Um, this is one of my greatest assets within my company on here. Um, we take this stuff very, very seriously on here. Value per subscriber, that, that's all that I'm worried about. If, if, if it's blue, it's $1.50 or more per subscriber is worth to me every month. I have a, I have a list of over 100,000. So just through my email list alone, when I email out, you do the math. That's just from email. Okay, it's over a million dollars a year just from pure email, nothing else. So we take this very, this is an asset. You, you could actually assess the net worth of my company by looking at various pieces of it. One of them would be our, our growing email list. So this is a huge, huge money maker for us. Um, so it's very important to us that, that our team, they understand their micro KPIs down here. They're looking at this. So we've got to have the open rate. So it's gonna, you have to split test the subject lines, right? Um, if, if you get them to open, the, the next thing you want to do is you've got to have a click-through rate. So we look at the click-through rate. Are, are, they, are they clicking through through the article, the free content, the purchase, the upgrade, stuff like that? Um, un, unsubscribe rate. So our unsubscribe rate, basically, we've all unsubscribed from emails before, right? You go, you unsubscribe, you have a confirmation, spam, report, no, click, you're done. Well, I just told my team, I said, how can we take this KPI unsubscribe rate? Because right now it's 100%. 100% of people who go to unsubscribe, unsubscribe. 10 people go there, 10 people unsubscribe. You guys figure out a way to uh, reduce this. So now, uh, where we're at right now is, is when people unsubscribe, they go to a video. And the video person comes on, says, hey, we're really sorry, we're, we're trying to provide value for your business and give you content, actual content for your business. We're, we're not trying to spam you. Uh, here are some of our uh, most liked recent emails, and, and we have those kind of sliding down below the screen with actual customer testimonials down there saying, hey, I really enjoyed this article, thank you so much, I implemented my business, so on and so forth. So they're seeing it down there as we're saying it, because people are going to be really quickly want to unsubscribe. And then down below, they have an option to go into different kind of buckets. I'd like to receive only one email a, a week, or I'd like to receive it only on my operations, or so on and so forth. And what's, what's turned out is that uh, we've now, our unsubscribe rate, um, we get to save seven out of every 10 people who go to unsubscribe. And, and when you view email as an asset that actually gets you monthly revenue, which we do, that's a huge number to save there, okay? But that, that can only be possible if, if my team knows exactly their micro KPIs and I'm managing up here. So if it dips down below $1.50, we're in the yellow. So something's happening here. And we're gonna find it somewhere down here on that end of it, okay? It's real simple stuff. I'm only doing this, gamify it, blue, I'm cool, I don't, I don't even need to know what it is, what, what the number is, as long as it's blue, I'm good. Okay, um, so we talked a little bit about, basically your, your, your levers are the things that you wanna measure, the most important are gonna be your traffic and conversion, that's gonna get you your, your biggest bang for the dollar. So now we're looking at landing pages. So regardless of the type of business you're in, you've got some place 
where you're sending your prospects, right? Where they're actually gonna make some kind of buying decision on here. And if, if that buying decision is a phone call to you, I would encourage you, depending on the type of business that you have, to not do that, to make it automated as possible. Uh, we used to do it by phone calls. We used to be, okay, this is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is how much cost per lead, this is, you, you prepay this much, these are the terms of agreement, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, and if you're interested, give us a call. And then we switch from that to it's all automated. It's kind of like if you run Google AdWords, if, if you have a, a, a regular account with Google AdWords, it's pretty hard to pick up the phone and call somebody, right? But they make billions and billions of dollars doing it because it's all automated. Same with Facebook, paid advertising. Um, it'd be really hard to call somebody at Facebook and just chat about you know, this Facebook advertising stuff. And, and we designed our company that way too, so I would encourage you to do that. And when you're doing uh, KPIs it's, and, and you're measuring, it's, it's much easier to do this. So landing pages are huge. I, I gave a couple examples just with the buttons, and the colors of the buttons, and, and the writing in the buttons. Some other, uh, some other things that we've done, and I got this from, um, from, from Mind Valley, was we do the, uh, uh, the testimonial sandwich on that, it's just real simple. It actually increased our sales by almost, our, our landing conversions by about, I don't know, 60, 67%. All it is is that normally you have, you know, product description, some testimonials, uh, and then you're gonna have a, a buy button, and then some kind of guarantee, right? Well, we just, what happens is that if you add more testimonials, fresh ones down there, and then you add another buy button, so the buy button is a sandwich, and you add more testimonials in there, just the conversion rate will go up immediately. Again, no additional cost, nothing like that. So and it doesn't matter what type of business you're in, what you're selling, everyone can implement these kind of things. Um, the ones in bold down here, we have over 3,000 lead gen sites. So the ones in bold are here are stuff that we could implement straight across the board. So a uh, order menu, it's gonna work in any niche we're in, doesn't matter. Uh, or, uh, order menu that has a, a higher conversion rate, we can, we can implement that across the board. Uh, guarantee, with, with our guarantee, we play around with a lot of different things. Currently right now, what we're doing with our guarantee, we can implement this across all niches, all sites, is, um, is um, we extend it out to uh, 60 days, and then we actually give testimonials of people who uh, did exercise our uh, guarantee and they just there's just little snippets in there that, hey we got our refund back right away so on and so forth it was really easy to work with no hassle um, so that really helps because everyone even if it's b2b or b2c everyone has some kind of buyer's remorse and helps overcome that um, and, and again these are things we're going to do statewide our uh, uh, across our all of our sites our assets headlines is going to be Pacific to niche and stuff like that so we can't do statewide our uh, across the whole company with that um, and then we've got SEO lead gen site. So our, so our AdWords uh, department speaks directly with our, with our SEO. So we don't do SEO first to do our lead gen sites. We do AdWords and we know which keywords are gonna convert the, the fastest and the best. And then, and then our SEO team will take those words um, and then they'll make sure that we're ranking for those in, the, in our niches. And I'm just looking at on here, I'm just looking at, at the conversion rate, nothing else on here. So very simple, these are their basic um, KPIs down below. But again, all that I'm looking at, and the only thing that I see initially is just, is just the smart KPI on that. So a lot of times when people do uh, uh, KPIs and, and they want to start measuring and split testing stuff, there's so many different variables you could do. I'd really encourage you to do what uh, Tim Ferriss recommends, and that's minimum effective dose. Just find the main key levers, the main key measurements, and make it as simple as possible. Don't go crazy. If some of you who are into AdWords, you probably saw my list you could see probably 20 other things that you could have measured. We don't. We just keep it very, very simple <coughs> on that. Um, these are the tools that, that I use. Um, they're all really basic. There's nothing complex on it on here. Uh, the only, this is uh, uh, um, optimizely. That's just for a, our uh, A-B split testing. There's probably better ones out there. I don't know. We haven't used it. It's not broken, so we, so we just continue to use it. Um, <coughs> Basecamp, probably a lot of you already use Basecamp. Um, Skype, my entire team logs in at the same time, and then they log out for lunch, and then they log out at the same time. All, so that's our virtual meeting spot. Um, uh, YouTube Hangouts, we use that for meetings and stuff. So just, uh, Joyproof, um, whoops. Joyproof, we actually, I, I, I need to remove that, but um, Joyproof is actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a really lightweight piece of software because all of my employees work from home. Uh, that basically monitors and takes uh, video <coughs> screenshots of their entire activity. Um, and then uh, we, we can go through and we can kind of fast forward and see what they've been doing. We actually, um, 
uh, split tested that, and we, we, we took joyproof off of half of our employees, and we found that when we, when we re, uh, removed it, our production level went up. Uh, and, and the bottom line is that people just don't like to be monitored. And they're, they're already being monitored by their KPIs, and that's simple, basic math. And as long as they're reaching their KPIs, the company's fine, the company's healthy, and if they reach their KPIs and they're working four hours a day or eight hours, that's fine, they're all on salary. So it really doesn't matter. So, uh, and if they want to stop and check Facebook, go ahead. It doesn't matter to me. As long as your KPIs are there, I'm fine with that. So, um, so just some random facts on here. Uh, the majority of my employees are uh, around the uh, um, uh, Manila on that. Um, the reason we do that is because uh, we try to create a, an environment, uh, a, a, a working culture there. I used to have call centers in the, the Philippines, and it's really important there to have a culture that's kind of like their second home. Uh, so uh, in order to bring that from, from their home, they're working from home to bring them together, we have two uh, team lunches twice a month. Um, and so it's important that they're all within the area. So they spend a couple hours together, we, we, we pay for the lunch, they maybe play some games and stuff like that just to build a uh, camaraderie on that end of it. Um, I do one Google Hangout call out, or uh, one uh, Google or uh, uh, YouTube Hangout call. Uh, per month, that's just a kind of a monthly meeting on that end of it. I basically just give the intro, kind of the high levels of where the company is, where we're going, and then my project manager, which is really kind of like my, my CEO, uh, the project manager then takes over and he'll maybe present for like 20 minutes or so, and then I'll wrap it up and that's it. I'm really very, very hands off. Um, we do two team events per year. Um, in the first year I, I did it, I just said, yeah, just bring your family on in and we'll eat and have a good time. But the problem with that is that when you invite a, a Filipino to bring their family, each person literally brought like 30 to 40 people and it ended up being a disaster. So <laughs> what we do now is uh, you can bring your kids and your mother and father. And that, that, that works out much better. Um, yep, that's it, what we got here. Okay, so just to recap on here. Um, you really, if you're looking at measuring KPIs, you just start with one, you start with the basic. You want to create a lever out there that's going to give you the greatest return. And if you're doing nothing now, then anything is going to go up. Um, there, there's not going to be any downside to it whatsoever on that. Focus on the main things, your traffic and conversion. Without traffic, and then you convert the traffic, um, you really don't have a business at that point. Keeping it simple, and remember, it's not, it's not these huge changes. It's not this, I gotta increase my ad budget by 20%, or I gotta add, hire new employees, or anything. It's just little tiny tweaks. Three to five percent across maybe two to four main areas in your business that have something to do with traffic and conversion, like measuring your KPIs for your AdWords or your paid traffic, or monitoring your, your SEO, um, looking at your landing pages on the end of it. That's it. That's very short. So now we'll do questions and answers on here. So go ahead. A couple quick ones. First is, um, are you incenting your staff to meet the KPIs? Because having KPIs is one thing, but having your staff really take them like seriously and being invested in that. And then like, if you could talk specifically about how that, in, how that incentive program actually works. Um, and secondly, there seems to be a lot of specific things that people need to know. And I'm not sure when yeah. you hired your folks in the Philippines or Bangladesh, if they knew that in advance. So did you develop all the training yourself? Because you Good have so many different things you need to train them on. Okay, so just to recap the questions on there, is it, we'll, we'll start from the beginning. Um, uh, it, yes, the business is very specific. So um, basically when I started out, it was, just, it was just one person, me. So what I did when, before I hired my first person is I documented the training process so that they could go in and it would be just like a course and they watch it. It also helped clarify my business better when I have to, internalize it and then I have to teach someone else I better understand my business too so that's how it started out and then and then and then the, the new person that came in say for AdWords I would document everything that I know about AdWords how I run my budget all that stuff then the person that comes in already has experience with AdWords would then watch the videos look at the documentation learn how I do it with the business the expectations the KPIs all that kind of stuff that way there's nothing unclear about what they need to do they take over and then if there's any new courses on AdWords or training, then I buy that for them. They go through the course, and then they will summarize the course and what they implemented inside our uh, living, breathing documents. Um, and so they just take over from there. They, they become the expert, and I just sit back. But I did that for everything, the SEO, the landing pages. But then I just hired better people, and they got more training on that end of it. And then we also cross-train within our company too. So we also use the documents from there as well. And then we hire someone new, 
it's really, really helpful. It's not like you have to start at phase one and someone's got to coach them or something like that. They watch all the training. They will get some coaching towards the end, but, um, but it's, 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 it's very uh, minimal. And, and the numbers don't lie. The math is really, really simple on that end of it. As far as incentivizing them uh, on how they go about doing that, um, I don't offer any incentives on that. Uh, the incentives are that uh, you're going to get uh, recognition. Um, you, you're pretty flexible with your schedule and times that you want to take off. Um, we don't have set schedules. I mean, as long as your KPIs are there and you want to take you know, next week off or something, as long as it's not hurting the team, that's perfectly fine. You're still going to get paid for doing it. Um, you have to go through really a lot of filtering to hire people. Yeah. And it seems like you're asking for a lot of quality focus. Yes. And delivering we pay almost double what an average position would be here like in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, we have we have we have tests that, that they do, and they're more problem solving because we want them to be able to think and, and come up with uh, solutions. So, like, like a real easy one is 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 you could, we, we could say maybe we're hiring somebody to like manage our um, email campaigns. Uh, we would then ask them to okay, how would you? Right now, our unsubscribe rate is this is our process, and it's now 100% unsubscribe rate. How would you? Re how would you? prevent this or reduce this number down? Because right now we have 100% of people unsubscribing. I mean, how could you bring this down to, say, two people or, or, or three out of 10 people? And they have to come up with their own ideas. I, I need people to think like that because I'm not going to come up with the process. I'm going to come up with the problems and ask you for the solutions. Are you people off of or are you doing jobs? No, I, um, yeah, I'd have to ask my project manager. We haven't hired for a while. Uh, but I, I believe, yeah, they're using the Philippines. We, we also hired a company to help us find employees. Not a, not a middle person where they work in an office and they get them, but, but actually hire and screen people. Um, so kind of like a HR department and we just, we, we step back. They, they filter in uh, the best and then my project manager goes through them, interviews them, will give them a, a, some type of real life thinking project. So it's really interesting when you have five top candidates and, and you present a real problem that you have in your business right now. And you'd be surprised if one or two people will come up with an amazing um, solutions to that. And it's like, wow, that's probably the kind of person that we want. We also, uh, again, none of the stuff is, is uh, original. This is stuff I've just been coached on and, and implemented. Uh, one, of the, one of the other things that we do is that we, we pay employees if they want to leave. So we wanna, if anytime you just want to get up and leave, it's equivalent to 2,000 US dollars. And we just copy that after. Do people know other companies that do that? Why, why do you do that? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Why do you pay people to leave? Because I don't want them there. If, 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 if I, they want to leave, I, we, we don't want them there. And that's a big enough incentive uh, for them to, to leave. We, it is. It's a hell of a lot of money. For, a few, but we didn't want them anyways. We, we, we found out after a few months that we just weren't the kind of people that we wanted. Uh, the minimum uh, is going to be around $900 on that, and it, it, it'll go up from there. So we, we, we pay pretty good. We pay above average. You said you're like a CEO. Yes. Um, that, that was one of the first few hires that I had. He'd been with me for five years. And I had a, uh, what I'd done when I was ready to really sit, step back and away from my company, um, I went, I was, I was coached. Sometimes you get the wrong coaching or coaching that just doesn't work for you. Um, and I was told that you should probably go out and hire a CEO. You know? You've got a million dollar company. You need somebody to, to run and, and grow this thing properly. And I did. And it, it just didn't work out. It was too process oriented and driven and it just it didn't mix with the culture and then I said I'll just hire with it from within. So his title is project manager but he's really CEO of the, of the company on that. Let's go there in the back to you. Go ahead. Um, one big, so I, I have different KPIs and SOPs that I've got but they're all like in like Google Docs and all over the place. You said you have like a basically like a membership site for your own team mm -hmm. and then you optimize press. Yeah, everything's within there, all the training documents, uh, KPIs and stuff. But just until the last year, we've been using Excel. So we just, we just switched over from Excel, and then one of our programmers said, hey, let me just put this in our company website, and they can just enter the numbers in rather than doing the, the Excel sheet. So we're really simple. I know the unsubscribe thing in, in your email, when you said, okay, come up with this functionality. A lot of them, a lot of ESPs don't really allow that. So is that like a custom thing you guys built, or is that like a... Like, are you using a different email service provider? Or 
we, we we actually developed our own because because we couldn't find so it's like we started and, and this is what the really cool thing about KPIs and then and the KPIs you know, how do we keep pressing these buttons up here so so how do we get our open rates uh, open more and we started you know the team so it was rat routing their brain and how do how do we increase these um, these these open rates how do we increase the deliver rates, how do we get it out of the spam boxes and, and, and so that people have an opportunity to actually open them up. And then you, you keep searching and searching and searching for more answers because you keep reaching for these KPIs, right? So what happens is that we, our, I, I didn't know this, but, but, but my team went out and they learned about your IP reputation. Some of you who do email may know all about that kind of stuff. I didn't know anything about it. So we, we learned, I think we are using Aweber at the time. Uh, Aweber didn't really have the best IP address uh, reputation. You can actually look that up online. There's tools to do that. Um, and then when we started learning about that, then we learned, well, if you send out more than, I think it's 10,000 emails in one shot through one IP address, Google will automatically peg you as spam. So you're getting up in the spam box. So how do you avoid that? Well, my team came up with solutions for that because they're driven by KPIs. And what we ended up with is we actually now have our own. We have, we have 68 independent IP addresses that are ours. And, and, and I have a list of over 100,000. So what happens is that um, each IP address doesn't do more than 10,000 per day. It's actually much less. And, and so it filters out slowly. So, so what happens is that Google and Yahoo and stuff like that, all their spam filters, they know there's some emails coming from this IP address, but it's way less than their threshold of spam, so we get a higher delivery rate. And again, it's through KPIs and keep digging down, how do we find solutions, what do we gotta do, what do we gotta do to find solutions, and that's, that's part of it right there, so. So, when you start off some KPIs with these, like absolute values, for example, like a conversion rate, you might be happy, you, you don't know what your optimal conversion rate is. So True. At first, for the first few months, let's say for six months, your target is to increase that by like 2.5 percent. Let's say, uh, like, are your KPIs absolute numbers? And when they are, are you happy with that? Like, if your conversion rate reaches like 13 percent, which is amazing for some industries, sure. How do you know? Like, it, like, can you talk more about that? Are the absolute values? Or are they yeah. Um, some of them are absolute values, like the like the uh, Google Quality Score. A ten's a ten, right? You can't get any higher than that. So, so th th that's an absolute. But like a conversion rate, you know, we may have a conversion rate of uh, an overall net conversion rate of say eight percent of, of the people who come there. Can we increase that? We can. Is it is it hard? It's a lot harder to do. I mean, once you've gone from one to two and, and you start inching your way up, there's going to get some kind of ceiling there. But you can always improve things and always slightly tweak it. But there's going to be a uh, there's going to come a point where you're getting really close to that ceiling, and 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 we may be limiting ourselves by by believing that. But that's just kind of the way we go. And then we just focus on the other KPIs. But business is 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 dynamic. So that number doesn't always hold there. It's not like you figured it out and it stays there. It'll stay there and then it'll drop back down. So you got to start start over. A lot of KPIs are because of the marketplace are dynamic. So they're going to push down when you're trying to push them up. When you think they're up there and they'll stay for a while and all of a sudden something will happen and it'll change. How do you determine what's blue, yellow, brown? Well, so for that's just that's just. Um, internal decision and that's just where we set the benchmark. So for example, with our uh, uh, email KPIs, a dollar fifteen above is blue. So, so it's something that you and your product manager Yeah. So. Yeah. And it all comes down to the numbers. You gotta know your numbers and where you're, you're profitable and stuff like that. When you mentioned uh, you mentioned the spam filter kick in and you're spending you're sending over ten thousand emails at a time. I think that's at five or ten thousand, I'm not sure but yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And a, a lot of people have, do you have a list larger than 10,000? Yeah, like yeah. 50, so. yeah, exactly. So what you want to do with something like that is that there, there are other services out there that have different IP addresses so that each IP address is not doing more than maybe 1,000 or 5,000 per day. And then you spread them out depending on, on your list so it doesn't trigger that initial spam. Uh, on that. Also, you got the quality score. So you, it's really critical that you have open rate, and then they're also measuring kids open rate and, 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 did, and did somebody click through, then your, then your score goes up, all that kind of stuff. There's other. Uh, can you talk about maybe a couple of things that you really like, didn't expect that went wrong when you went from like 10 to 20 to 30 people? Things that were like surprises or that maybe culturally related or just like, like number of people related? Like were there surprises or really bad things that happened? Um, or mistakes? Sure. Okay. So, so just a little bit of background. If I mentioned this before, um, 
in, in another business of mine, um, years ago, lifetimes ago, uh, we, had, uh, call, we owned call centers in the Philippines. So I already had a good idea about the culture, and that's why I gravitated towards, towards building a team around there. Um, and I initially had around 50 employees or so, and then when I started doing uh, more detailed KPIs, we were able to uh, more efficiently uh, run our team and our systems, and so I got rid of a lot of extra people uh, doing that. Um, the, the challenge with the virtual is always trying to make the culture there, uh, particularly with the Philippines. With the call center, it's easy because we had buses that go out, pick people up, we bring them in, we feed them breakfast and lunch. Um, we have all kinds of games and events at the workplace. Uh, and so I try to create that same environment online. It's not going to be the same. I just do the best that we possibly can. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have throwback Thursdays so people will throw up pictures of when they were kids and stuff like that. Uh, we have the luncheons and we have the, the events twice a year to try to create that belly to belly and try to get people to see each other within the company. And uh, I'm always open to suggestions and other ways to help build that virtual team because they're all working from home. But I think right now we're doing a pretty good job with that. On that end of it, yes. So you're, looking, you're looking at new market um, or town. Are there any metrics that you use to evaluate someone as a good, a good lead or a good prospect? Um, you mean for a um, offline niche? Yeah, it, yeah. So like, it's like, 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 like plumbers versus landscapers, something like that. Is that? No, like the actual market, um, not the not the vertical itself, but the town that you're serving. Oh, the town. The town yeah, um, we, we, we need a certain amount of um, uh, uh, search volume. So the traffic's already got to be there for that particular niche. Uh, we, we just, um, when I first, when I first uh, did the uh, paper call business, uh, it was all public and all my niches were there. It was like, we specialize in these 20 niches, blah, blah, blah. And then, because uh, I was getting a lot of publicity through, uh, Bill Phillips was also doing a pilot TV program, and I was on television shows and stuff like that. So i getting a lot of people visiting my company site, and I got tons of copycats on there. Uh, and they, you know, I, I could see them coming in to my niches right there. So we, so we shut that down, um, and instead of having customers come to us, we ended up pushing out and going to customers. And we do that through uh, uh, paid advertising. But for each particular city that, that we're in, uh, we need a base population just of at least at least 150,000 people, and then we have to have enough searches there, yeah. too, on that end of it, because we're not, we're, we're just stepping in front of traffic, yeah. right? We're not trying to create the traffic. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it seems a lot of your uh, KPIs that you show are team KPIs. Do you use individual employee KPIs? No, no not, not this time. Um, I could. You can go crazy with KPIs, right? Once you start getting into them, you see the power of them, you can go crazy, but I would just really encourage everyone to med. No, mm -hmm. no, because because the, the, it's. I think the, it, it wasn't designed this way. I was just trying to keep it simple. But if a team's responsible for the numbers, then they're responsible for that number, not a not a individual. And if you've read, there's a really good book out there. It's about uh, uh, tribes, setting tribes in the uh, workforce, and there's four different levels of it. And the and the tribe three level is the I'm the best but everyone else kind of sucks. And those are not good team players, but our school systems encourage that. You know, I got into Yale, I did this, I'm the number one salesperson, I'm the doctor, I'm the head, I'm the best, everyone else is below me, that's not the team. What you want is, is I'm always trying to create a, a, a team environment, a tribe environment of a level four or five, and, and level four is we are the best and the other competition sucks. And then level five, which is the highest, which I've never reached, but uh, I would like to, that's where uh, a whole company culture is only competing against what's possible. That's like Tesla, okay? They're just competing with what's possible. They have, you know, anyways, <coughs> sidetrack. But no, I don't, not, not, not individual, because I want that team. I want, I want a team to be responsible for that number. I want them to work together. <laughs> no, just the KPIs. We used, to, we used to monitor their screens. We removed them. Work, workforce went up. Um, we're, we're pretty relaxed about that. If, if you don't want to be here, we'll pay you to leave. Um, if uh, your, your, your KPIs, you, you need to solve solutions for this, for problems that we have, you need to work together as a team to do that. If, if, you're, if, if you're not doing it, then you're, you're, you're going to go and we'll pay you to leave. So if there's a problem in uh, employee, does the team kind of straighten them out and you don't even get involved? I don't get involved in that, no, no. I'm, I'm strictly looking at the KPIs, and I, for some people, that it's kind of like. Um, um, does anybody have a pilot license here? Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's kind of drive learning to drive with instruments, 
right? Where you're not actually looking out, you're driving with instruments, it's gonna be very scary. Uh, and that's what I'm doing. I'm driving my company with instruments. I'm not looking out the window trying to, trying to guide my plane where it needs to go. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to do the best my can. Let's, let's go over here, yeah. Nope, not anymore. Uh, we, we used to. See, see the problem is, is, is that when I started out in business, um, they, they can contact our, our customer support, right? But, but they can't actually pick up the phone call. Uh, pick up a, a, even though we're a paper call, they can't call us. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But, um, but that's one of the reasons we're able to grow so much. So when I first started out, I, I did everything for everybody out there. I did their SEO, their AdWords, all that kind of stuff. And that's just a nightmare. And then you gotta deal with different owners and all this kind of stuff. And they just slow you down. At the end of the day, all they want is just live calls. They just want that phone to ring. They don't want promises about SEO. They don't want to hear about AdWords accounts, none of that kind of stuff. Um, and so we just streamlined the process all the way down. And, and at the very end, it was like, how do we get rid of the customer basically, but yet still keep them? Um, and we just modeled after like, it's like an AdWords account. If you Unless you're spending a lot of money, it's pretty hard to pick up the phone and call up Google, right? But they're a billion dollar company. So I would encourage everyone in here, even depending on the type of company you have and stuff, if you do not have to interact with that customer on the phone, because they will waste your time and you can promise to deliver them exactly what they want and it's turnkey for them because they're busy and you're busy, it's a win-win all the way around. Now there's going to be some customers that will not do business with us because we don't have a place to call. That's okay, we're, we're, we're not going to be a match. You, you need somebody to handhold you and we're just not going to do that. We'll handhold you through our support and I do have KPIs for support and then we just, we, we just measure two things with, with our KPIs with, with support. That's the customer feedback, the star rating, we're at a, a, a four and a half or, or higher, is blue um, and then uh, we have a 90% or higher one time, first time resolution. So a customer comes in with a problem, that first response solves it. If they, have, if they keep that dialogue going, then we didn't do a, a good job first time. So who's next? Um, it, it depends. So like our um, SEO department is, is, is larger on that. So uh, we've got uh, 11 people on that team. A lot of them are, are writers uh, because doing SEO is really it's in, intensive. You know, we've got to create other websites, uh, separate hosting systems, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, AdWords is less. We, we, we've got three people on there on that. So it just it's hierarchy within the team or is it all the product no, they're just, they're just all within their own uh, departments, whether it's SEO, AdWords, they, they, they cross over and share. Uh, but the project manager, that's, that's, that's like the CEO, but I didn't give him the title of CEO. Just he's, he's working with everybody. Everybody. He's in charge of everything. The, the, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If the shit hits the fan, I'm going to him first. That's, he's so what do you on that end of it. Um, he gets paid a lot on that end of it for, for that. So. Um, I don't know if I should share that. He paid you know, a little over sixty-five thousand plus some bonuses, so he, he gets paid very well. It's it's a it's a game changer for him, I think. What's that? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Do you think there's a difference in, in workers in Manila versus Wu and Davao, and just the level of English and the level of education? What's your? What's I'm sure there is. I don't have any opinion on that. When when I started, I started based on what I knew. My my, my reference point. My reference point was call centers in the Philippines. So that's why I started. Yeah, in Manila, yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's, that's I, my... I'm under the impression that uh, workers from Manila are, they have better English, better educated, and they're probably worth, what, you're probably paying them a lot. A lot more than they get, so yeah. I, like, it sounds like you're getting the value. Best of the best, yeah, that's, a, that's our goal. Yeah, that's the goal. It's not easy to, to build a good team, but it's worth it. It's, uh, constantly. You're not that involved in your day-to-day, -day, sort of like making things better? Zero. So that's, that's the kind of the most surprising thing, I think, from, from your talk so far, is that you have the KPIs, that's great, but like there's innovation going on, and you're not stepping in and leading that or facilitating that. That's, I have no interest that's in That's kind of the black box that I don't quite see how you manage to pull that off. Well, if we have problems, like, like, like I, I think the email was a good example. It was like, we, we have our... Um, but you're not leading a meeting and saying we have this problem, what can we do? Well, we do once a month. Once a month. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm introducing it, but I'm handing over the lead and the responsibility to the project manager. So the team is looking up to him, to, to him not, not, not me. But, but, but I'm presenting the problem. The problem is, is that, look, how do we get these open rights on here? Um, this team member over here made a suggestion that our, that, that our current IP uh, reputation that we're using through, I think it was AWeb or in the beginning, has this kind of quality score. How do we do this? 
who's who, who's going to solve this problem? How do we come up with a? I just step out of it. And I, I just sit there and, and like brainstorm with them. No. Have all the ideas and go no. The no. I've kind of lost my edge with that, so I don't do it anymore. I used to do that on that end of it. So yeah, I'm I, I'm 50 by the way, and I'm I'm kind of tired. So with <laughs> <laughs> working and stuff, so I don't want to. I'm okay with sitting back on that end of it. Sure. Maybe no, he was ready to do that. Yeah, um, I, it was a little bit of leap of faith, to be honest with you. I didn't have all the clear answers with it, um, but uh, it's, it, I, I knew him well. He'd been with me for five years. Uh, I've seen him play different roles in the company. I didn't know if he was ready or not, but um, I tried the CEO thing, and, and that just didn't work out with me. You know, somebody who's already been a CEO of other companies, um, and I thought, what the heck? Let's let, let's give this a try because it really, in my particular situation, it couldn't have gotten any worse. And, uh, and uh, I didn't want to be, I wanted to find somebody that, that could take over, that the team respected and knew, understood the culture. So it was actually the best thing it was that, that I could have done. So I don't have any clear cut answer to that. It was basically a leap of faith and I knew I had the relationship there. So sometimes that's the way things happen. Sales yes. Yeah, it's more an operation questions, but yes, uh, that, that, that's a good question. So, for the, uh, basically, what it was asking is, is that do we do anything for our, our paper call customers to help them convert over? And, and we do. What, what we happened, what happened in the beginning is we found out surprisingly that even if a really well-run uh, offline business uh, can have professional staff up front answering the phones, they end up dropping about 30% of the calls. And uh, they don't, they're, they're not even aware of it. So my team came up with a, with a solution and the solution was is that we created a customer login and we added some other things in there. And so one of the things was uh, as soon as they log in the dashboard they see, they see it by day, month, however they want it, they, they see the number of calls missed, the number of calls answered. And that miss, they're, they're having to pay for their missed calls whether they answer or not, you're, you're getting charged for it, okay? Um, and so, and then, and then, and then that, that evolved because it, KPIs, solutions, how do we find a solution for this? That evolved into providing another service for the customers. And, and that is where we record all the calls and then uh, it's, it, it's, it's a manual process. Um, and then, and then the, I have a team that goes through. Okay, so, you know, John answered, the, John answered 10 phone calls this week. Um, and his, his closing KPI is just to set an appointment to have a, somebody come in or set an appointment for a bid. He set zero bids and he missed three phone calls and here's the recordings of them because a lot of times the owner of the company is not even aware of it. And it's like, oh, here is, you know, here's, here's, here's Susie over here and she, 10 calls and man, she set up seven appointments and blah, blah, blah. And then a lot of them don't incentivize, they don't really understand what they're, what they're closing. So that's how we help them because if we help them and they have access to that data and we provide a solution, it's a win-win, right? So it's a good question, more operationals, but. Yes. Was it? What was it? Um, it just didn't understand our culture and stuff. Um, and you know, if you're going to be paying somebody, the the salary was um, three hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and uh, there's going to get part of the profits and stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty pretty typical, or even higher. Um, I just expected a lot more, and I just wasn't getting it, and I, it just didn't feel a, 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 a right fit. And I had interviewed a ton of people personally. He is the CEO. He is. Sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. But it wasn't about the money. That's a lot of money here, um, and stuff. And, and he gets bonuses and stuff too. It's just that he was actually the right person for the job. He so knew so the company. It's a nomenclature thing versus a responsibility. Yeah, nomenclature and just understanding the the, the environment too, and, and the business. And, and and we understood each other. We had a good relationship too, on that end of it. So, yep. Oh, before it was good. Right, what stood out to me was that like, you were making 1.6 million personal incomes. Like even before the KPI system, like you were obviously quite steady. <laughs> yeah, I was working like 20 hours a day. Though. I was killing myself. But um, uh, the, uh, the biggest thing from uh, uh, Bill Phillips, yes. So the biggest lesson that I learned from Bill Phillips, and Bill Phillips is an amazing guy, by the way, um, is that uh, you know we all have these end goals, right? We have the end goals, these things that we want to do. Maybe we want to grow our business, or we want to lose weight, or we want to have more time with with friends and family, stuff like this. We have this end goal in mind. Uh, maybe it's an income 
and stuff. Um, it's, it's never about the end goal, okay? It's always about the process to getting there. So instead of falling in love with the end goal and that end of it, you need to fall in love with the process, the stages to get there. That way you will never end. You fall in love with the process. So when you find people that uh, you know, make millions of dollars a year and you ask, why are you still working you know, 40, 50 hours a week? Because they love the process. On the end of it, or you know, you talk, you know, a, a really good athlete. On the end of it, they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it because now they're professional. They're doing it because they they they, they love the process of training and improving in the competition. So the biggest uh, takeaway from Bill Phillips for me that uh, that stands out the most is, is 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 fall in love with the process, not the end goal. It's good. It's a good question. Anything else? All right, guys. Counting, one, two, three, that's it. All right, thank you.